All right, now we're ready to get into the real part of chapter 10 here. We're going to learn how to graph the square root function, and more importantly, we're going to remind ourselves about translations, reflections, and dilations. So let's get started with some vocab. Just a reminder of the vocabulary, erratic hand is the expression underneath the square root sign, and the radical is the square root sign itself. So this symbol here is the radical, and then whatever variables and stuff you have inside of it or underneath it, that's called the radicand. So these vocabulary words will be used a lot in this, uh, this chapter, so make sure you're aware of what those are. And then lastly, a square root function is any function, f of x equals, uh, that contains uh, the square root of a variable. So you've got a radical, and inside of it there should be a variable. If you have a square root of just a number, that's just another number, so it's not a square root function. Uh, but if you have a variable under the radical sign, you have a square root function. So the simplest, most basic square root function is called the parent function. As we've learned about all the other functions, the parent function is the basic one. So y equals the square root of x. Simplest thing you can have underneath the variable is just an x. So the graph for y equals square root of x starts at 0, 0. As we saw um, the graph, I'll just sketch it real quick. It kind of looks like half a parabola looking here. This is the positive root x and then there's a negative root x down here. But when you're just looking at um, the root square root of x, there's no plus or minus in front, then we're automatically uh, looking only at the positive side. So only this positive part right here, starting at the origin 0, 0. Okay, of course we have to generalize that because we could slide it left and right, we could move it up and down. So just like before, h is the amount that we shifted left or right, and k is the amount that we shifted up or down, and then a is the stretch factor, and if a is negative, that means we've reflected it. So this, uh, this same shape here can get shifted left, right, up, down, stretched, or reflected. Uh, okay, so let's take a look. Here's your basic graph, y equals the square root of x. If you make a t-table, it's just like the x squared function, but you s swapped inputs and outputs. So over 1, up 1 is still true. But instead of over 2, up 4, we go, we switch it, over 4, up 2. Because the square root of 4 is 2 and then over 9, wherever 9 is, and then up to 3. Okay, If we shift it or stretch it, we can see some changes. Um, the basic graph here is the red one. Then if we stretch it out, we can multiply, for example, multiply by 2. The a value is 2. Every single coordinate point is twice as tall as it used to be. If we stretch it by a factor of one half, that's the same as shrinking it. So every single coordinate point here is only half as tall as it used to be. If we put a negative sign in the front, uh, that reflects it over the x-axis, and so it's going to go downward instead of upward. All the y-coordinates will be negative instead of positive, and again, you can shrink it by a factor of half, keep it the same size, or stretch it. So negative in the front means it's going to go downward, like this, and a bigger number means it's going to be stretched out, and a smaller number means it's going to be shrunk down. Okay, so important to memorize the shape of the parent function. Just like we said, I'll just refresh your memory one final time. Over, start at the origin, 0, 0. Over 1, up 1. Over 4, up 2. That's your basic shape. And then you can shift and change from there. Translate, reflect, or dilate. So some examples. Graph each function and compare it to the parent graph. State the domain and range. y equals 2 root x. Well, the square root of x would have been our basic parabola right here. Or but not parabola, sorry. Basic square root graph right here. We've got a factor of 2. So 0, 0 is my starting point. Normally I go over 1, up 1. But instead I'm going to go over 1, up 2. Normally I go over 4, up 2. But instead I'm going to go over 4, up 4. Uh, 2. And then normally I go over 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Normally I would go up 3, but instead I'm going to go up 6. Okay? So I can draw this graph in here, like this. And then compared to the parent graph, it is twice as tall. Let me draw in kind of a maybe a dotted line. The parent graph looks like that. So this actual one is twice as tall. The domain and range. Okay, so the domain is x is greater than or equal to 0. So the x coordinate has to be positive. And the range, the y values, are also positive. So it's only in the first quadrant. Next one, x, y equals square root of x. 
uh, with a one half in the front. So I'm not going to do this one here. Everything is just half as tall. We saw it on the previous slide. Next one, y equals 5 root x. Again, I won't do this one, uh, but I do want to point out that they count uh, by twos. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, etc. So when you're graphing these, um, if you have a very large stretch factor, you might want to count by, by a larger number. So these graphs are stretching it out and shrinking it. Now let's look at somewhere we're going left and right, and maybe even reflecting. So uh, this right here uh, means to the right 3. So my starting value is going to be right here. Okay, And then this negative sign right here, the a value is negative, this means reflect. But I don't have a number in the front, so I'm not stretched or shrunk. So I go over here. Now normally I'd go over 1, up 1, but instead of, I've got a negative sign and reflecting, I'm going over 1, down 1. Then over 1, 2... Hold on. Uh, yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4. Over 4, down 2. Uh, and I don't have enough space to fit anymore, so we can draw on our graph just like that. So you can uh, verify this is all good by plugging in actual numbers. This coordinate point is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, down 2. This point is 7, comma, negative 2. If you actually plug x equals 7 into this equation, you have 7 minus 3, which is 4, the square root of 4, which is 2, and then a negative in the front to give me the negative 2 that's right here. Let's look at the domain. The x coordinate has to be larger than 3 larger than or equal to. So x larger than or equal to 3. And the range, the y values are lower, see below, uh, less than or equal to, uh, this is a y value of 0. Okay, let's take a look at this one. This here means to the right 2, and this here means up 3. So from the starting point I'm going to go right 2, up 3. This is my new starting point and it's not stretched or shrunk or reflected. So from here, over 1, up 1, over 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2, and my graph is just like that. And that's it. That's the whole graph. There is nothing over here. I know it's kind of weird, but this whole part doesn't exist. So your domain is x is greater than or equal to 2. You cannot plug any numbers in that are smaller than 2 because otherwise you'll get the square root of a negative. And then my range is going to be larger than or equal to 3. Y values must be greater than or equal to 3. So the, the square root function is kind of restricted. It's only in a certain area. Uh, I'm not going to graph this one, but let's see what happens. This right here means it's gone right 4. This means up 1. So over 4, up 1. The starting point is here. And then, because the negative sign, it's actually going to come downward like this. And because the one-half, it's only going to be uh, one-half as tall as normal. Okay, so I hope that gives you a quick preview um, of what the graphs look like. You're really practicing applying everything you learned about transformations from the previous chapters just to a new shape. All right, that's it.